Hello my dear friends, you are in the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 18th of August of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. As you remember and as you know, the previous day was very difficult for the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians made try to implement at least two very big offensives and the first one took place on the Bradley Square on the south of Arekhov and the second one the Ukrainians were trying to implement in the vicinity of Veliko Novoselovka. For some reason the Ukrainians took a decision not to make a small operational pause, not to wait a little bit, not to complete regrouping. For some reason after the Ukrainians managed to establish control over Urajaina and to enter the north of Rabotina, the Ukrainians took a decision to continue pressure, to continue offensive operation. And as I understand, according to the results and based on the results, the Ukrainian officers and Ukrainian commanders were ready for that attack, but the soldiers on the ground weren't. And basically, during the previous day, yesterday, we saw a lot of battles, the, the tank battle in the vicinity of Arekhov, we remember this very interesting video, we saw the Ukrainian offensive operation in Urajaina, when the Ukrainians sent their forces among the fields to the certain deaths, uh, the Ukrainians wasn't ready, weren't ready to that attack. And today, the Ukrainians need to pay for the yesterday situation, and they're paying. First, we're going to start with Bradley Square because today we have a lot of interesting updates from this area. Probably the most interesting video that we received from this bridgehead is the evacuation operation that the Russians implemented in the south of Robotina. If you remember yesterday, somehow the Ukrainians managed to shut down the Russian helicopter. And to tell the truth, as I know, according to my calculations, this is not the first helicopter that was shot down by the Ukrainians during the previous months. As I know, the Ukrainians managed to shut, shut down at least two or three helicopters and as you can see in comparison with the first stage of the Ukrainian offensive operation in this area somehow the Ukrainians managed to improve their skills and currently we see that the number of Russian losses with this type of weapon have been increased has been increased we need of course maybe the Ukrainians managed to change the weapon or maybe more experienced soldiers were redeployed to the combat line very difficult to understand but anyway, as you can see, the Russians managed to complete a very successful evacuation. Uh, us usually the, uh, the helicopter Ki-52, uh, there are two pilots inside of this machine. One of them was killed as a result, uh, died as a result of the accident and the sec uh, the result of Ukrainian shot and the second one the Russians managed to save. If you remember, we, to, we saw a very interesting and significant video of the fightings in the vicinity of Rabotina in this area, the tank battle, when one Russian tank managed to um, destroy a lot of Ukrainian armored vehicles and probably that was some operational or tactical reserves in armored vehicles of the brigade that was involved in that operation because today the ukrainians continued their offensive operation they were attacking robotina but when talking today the ukrainians mainly were using infantry for example in this video we see how the ukrainian platoon was heading to the south in direction of bradley square and uh, the russians were tracking them following them and uh, the Russians managed to get some coordinates and they start bombing and shelling these positions. But as you can see, the Russians a little bit missed. So there is some kind of a lack in time and just probably as a result of artillery strike, just one soldier were wounded or probably killed. So the Ukrainians were moving from the north using just infantry. So that means that the Ukrainians landed their infantry somewhere in this area and after that few kilometers those soldiers under fire were moving to the south. Imagine yourself the quality of those soldiers who were fully loaded with machine guns, with grenades, with everything they need for uh, because they arrived in this area not just for one hour clashes, probably they have replaced somebody and after such a long trip under such a hot sun imagine yourself the quality of these forces and after that of course the russians start bombing and shelling these infantry these forces with the drones um anyway uh, you can uh, say you can have your opinion about the situation as about the battle of Robotina, but i see that this is just a regular massacre without any purpose the ukrainians repeat every single day uh, the same things the same step and they're getting the same result every single day so they're not even changing anything in this operation another wave of attack uh, probably that was some kind of uh, the last armored vehicle the last last bradley of the brigade that was involved in that operation one more time the ukrainians 
uh, move their forces in this area than the land that the infantry the russians were controlling everything and after a small pause when the wild russians were targeting this area they destroyed the probably uh, one of the last bread lists in the ukrainian uh in the ukrainian force of this brigade Furthermore, the sources were saying that somehow the Ukrainians managed to enter the northern part of Robotina, but they do have positions inside of the settlement, and uh, the Russians were bombing and shelling the northern outskirts of this of this small village. On this video, we see how the Russians discovered the Ukrainian local operational machine gun position, and as a result of artillery strike, that building was just reduced to ruins. So, as you can see, for now, the Ukrainians don't know how they don't have possibilities how to dig in deeper in this area this area there are lots of artillery systems from the russian side and uh, there is one when talking about the battle of a certain bridgehead there are some benefits their positive and negative sides of the battle in one place as you can see on this video another ukrainian convoy another ukrainian platoon of infantry heading to the south and at some moment the russians start bombing them and probably with the guided bombs i'm not sure that anything where could survive to such, a, such a strike so one more time when talking about the battle of the same bridgehead for a very long time and we remember we know that the battle of robotina started uh, on the 4th of june and yet the ukrainians are on the same area and the same positions the benefits the positive thing of this area is that ukrainians already used this territory they know the trenches they know the positions they have already demined by their own uh, equipment most of the minefields so they know the safe ways safe roads and of course from this perspective uh, this entire battle for them we can say get become a little bit easier but when talking about the russian side uh, the battle for one bridgehead, a too long battle for one bridgehead, gives significant superiority for the forces who are in defense state. And the main thing is that artillery. Artillery, mainly when talking about the Russians, we're talking about D20, D30, and D and M stab B howitzers. Those howitzers that you need to use some trucks, uh, some cars, some buses, some vehicles to re redeploy from one position to another. The Russians have some thousands of these pieces of armor, these artillery systems. And the thing is that uh, the Russians have redeployed significant number of artillery systems in this area. There are probably maybe hundreds or dozens of artillery systems and their main purpose of these artillery systems to attack just at one position you don't need to change focus to redeploy them because if ukrainians somehow destroy this or that d30 or d20 howitzer they're so cheap they were produced in the soviet period of time so they're very cheap i won't be surprised if they're cheaper than ak-47 i'm just joking but i'm just trying to give you the understanding of the price and so on so let's assume that if there is a, a d20 howitzer somewhere in this area the, the main purpose that the russians need they need to learn to teach these uh was it to attack just in this position they don't need to do nothing else they're keep these hobbits are in this area if they need to stay here they will arrive in this area if they don't need to be there they will leave they will try to cover this hobbits are with the leaves and something like this to of course try to hide from the ukrainian drones and this is the only task of one hobbits let's say another howitza will be re are redeployed somewhere in this area and from this position this howitza should attack just in this point so the russians uh, since the beginning of june have created hundreds of such points on the south of Rabotina, of novopakrovka verbova and the only thing they need is to calculate to understand the ukrainian movement to get to the certain howitza and to start bombing this area and that's it this is the key let's say this is so simple and this is the key reason why the russians are so successful in defense because one more time let's take a look at video one more time as you can see in this video the ukrainians infantry were moving along this line and uh, along, using this road the second video the same road but in this case there was an armored vehicle so imagine and sell the number of forces from the ukrainian side who use the same road to get to the south so of course it's it's logical it's obviously to from the russian side to establish fire control over this area and at certain point of time to start attacking in this direction so this is the reason of such a heavy losses and this is the reason why the ukrainians 
anyway will not be able to develop the bridgehead. To continue their offensive operation th uh, further to the south, first of all, the Ukrainians need to destroy hundreds of artillery cheap D-20 howitzers in this area and to be, and to be sure for 100% that the Russians will not replace them with new one and only after that they will be able to proceed. And from my perspective, from my understanding, this is highly unlikely the Ukrainians already are are able to implement this tactic. They need to change the front line. Currently, the Ukrainians can't agree and can't accept that they failed and they lost the Battle of Robotina. And currently, they're trying to pay uh, with Ukrainian lives, with lives of their soldiers, the highest price for this situation. The Russians report that as a result of fierce fighting on the Robotina front line of the Zaporozhye area, the Ukrainians lost 195 soldiers, 5 armored vehicles and 3 artillery systems. Now we are moving further to the Vremivka tactical bridgehead. Currently, the Russians are trying to implement almost the same situation in this area, but when talking about this area, uh, there is no uh, static front line, everything, we can't say that the front line in this area, combat line in this area is dynamic, because we see that it takes a lot of time to capture this or that settlement, but by the way, as you can see, maybe you haven't mentioned this, but I have mentioned this, that since the beginning of the special military operation, this, this not special military operation, but this greatest counter-offensive operation, the Ukrainians managed to increase a little bit their speed of offensive operation. For example, when talking about um, Vremivka tactical bridgehead, during the first two months, I'm talking about uh, June and July, the Ukrainians managed to capture just uh, like four towns, Starozhova, Makarovka, Rovnopol, Novodarivka. So two months is the two months the Ukrainians spent to capture these uh, four settlements. But when talking about August, just for two weeks of August, the Ukrainians captured two settlements, Taramayorska and Urajina. And the main reason of that, at least we can see that the period of time when the Ukrainians managed to increase the speeds of capturing the settlements completely correspond correlates with the situation with the piece of news regarding the appro approval approval or from the United States of America to supply Ukrainians with the cluster rounds. If you want to hear my opinion, I see. Of course, I don't have real facts. We, we can't like con connect the situation. We need to make a real like investigation, probably a, a real investigation to get as much as as much as much as possible numbers, as many as possible numbers. But as I see, based on the very very like maybe not very deep analysis, I see that the providing and sending of the cluster rounds to the Ukrainian side have increased this process. The situation has increased the speed of Ukrainian forces. And now the Ukrainians can create, can make the front line a little bit more dynamic, which will force the Russians, which will not allow the Russians to establish and to use the same tactic as they're using on the Robotino front line. I'm talking about static position of the Howitzers that control every single forest line, every single brushes and snow. Because if front line changes, then they need to change your position of the Howitzer and you need to start targeting from the beginning. You need to attack at the point, trying to coordinate to correlate and it's it's not a very fast process the russians have already implemented and that process on robotina and when talking about vremivka it's a little bit difficult but now the russians are trying to do everything they have to complete this coordination for the artillery system and for these purposes the russians almost 24 hours, previous 24 hours, were bombing and shelling Urajaina and Staromayorska with guided bombs. Because the Russians understand, they have already read and understood and realized the Ukrainian tactic. They will continue, the Ukrainians will continue, and their main offensive operation, their main attack fist will go along the river Mokryale. And for these purposes, they need to accumulate their forces in Staromayorska and Urajaina. They need to they need to collect the critical mass because without critical mass you can't continue and this critical mass should be stretched from Staromayorska to Makarovka. So basically the Ukrainians need to accumulate a lot of forces in this triangle Staromayorska, Makarovka, Urajaina to complete their offensive operation further to the south. And the Russians of course understand this perfectly and currently and during the previous 24 hours the Russians made significant number of, art of um, guided bombs and tax in these two settlements and basically the Russians uh, reduced those these through settlements to ruins on so this video see 
another usage of the guided bombs in this area. And if you remember yesterday, we saw the same situation when the Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainians in this area. So almost three, four days in a row, so the only thing the Russians are doing in this area, they're bombing this territory 24 hours with guided bombs, with artillery systems, with missiles, with one purpose, to slow down the Ukrainians, to prepare another defense belt and to get ready before the next Ukrainian offensive operation, which obviously will take place very soon. The Russians reported that as a result of fierce fightings in this area during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost 210 soldiers, uh, 9 armored vehicles including 1 tank and 4 artillery systems. Very fierce clashes took place in this area very fierce clashes but yet without very deep and very big offensives from the ukrainian side the ukrainians from their side to also understand the configuration of the russian defense belt their positions and the ukrainians continue bombing and shelling the russian positions those howitzers those tanks from hidden positions along the forest lines along the trenches along the strongholds for example in this video we see the ukrainians claims that as a result of artillery strike they managed to destroy another russian armored vehicle now we are moving further to the south Donetsk area to Marinka uh, we have just one interesting geolocation from the west of Novomikhailovka the Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian artillery system and as a result of drone attack as a result of Lancet strike that Hovodza M777 Hovodza was destroyed uh, very nice position for the Hovodzers in this system we know that that this Hovodza has a very long, long, uh, long range distance of attack and basically from the this position the Ukrainians were supporting their forces in the vicinity of Ugledar and in the vicinity of Novomikhailovka and of course in the vicinity of uh, Marinka so that was a probably very good um, like um, event from the Russian side very good great achievement to destroy artillery system in this area when talking about Novomikhailovka we haven't received nothing from this bridgehead for the previous 24 hours more updates are coming from Krasnogorovka the Russians, if you remember, uh, since uh, for the previous months, they were storming the coal mines in this area. The Russians were attacking these uh, tank um, anti-tank positions inside the settlement. The Russians were storming the Ukrainians along the railways. The Russians were trying to capture the stronghold on the east of the settlement. The Russians were attacking and destroying the Ukrainian artillery system behind the settlement. You know that the Russians implemented every single type of operation they could implement regarding the settlement. I'm not even sure whether anything have survived as a result of Russian fire during the previous months. This is probably when talking about the entire special military operation, the front lines and so on. If you ask my opinion, as I see according to the concentration of fire and activity, I, I won't be surprised and won't lie you saying that probably this area, this small settlement like Krasnogorovka and Novomikhailovka is more, imp are, these towns are more important for the Russians uh, even more than Kupens front line. But Kupensk is something like a media victory. It's something to show something to talk about like a uh, counter-offensive operation it's not Kupinsk is not operation Kupinsk is an idea very great and very expensive idea that you can sell for very very good reputation and media victory but when talking about operational and tactical uh, purposes Krasnogorovka and Novomikhailovka of course has their priceless and today the Russians published the video how they managed to discover another Ukrainian positions in the settlement in the industrial zone. They managed to discover the Ukrainian fuel depot, ammo depot and uh, the Ukrainian artillery positions Tulpan. And after that uh, the Russians started bombing and shelling this area heavily. As a result of artillery strikes, bombings and so on, the Ukrainians probably lost all those uh, facilities like fuel depot and, and ammo depot and probably they lost their artillery system. Uh, I don't know how long the Russians are going to uh, ruin this settlement. Probably they, if they understand the risk, if they understand that the Ukrainians do have possibilities to send the endless waves of reinforcements in this area, probably Krasnogorovka expect the destiny of Marink. It, this settlement will be just reduced to ruins because uh, this is a stronghold that was created by the Ukrainians in the 2014 and 
highly unlikely that this is going to be a very easy trip for the Russians, like a summer trip for the Russians inside of the settlement. But who knows? Also, the Russians continue attacking in the Avdiivka front line, and today we got a very unexpected piece of news from the Russian sources, from the very reliable Russian sources. There is a Telegram channel to Major, and uh, they reported that uh, somewhere during the previous 24 hours, the Russians launched an offensive operation, and uh, that offensive operation was in direction of Keramik. Uh, very difficult to understand the uh, the uh, the purpose of that attack, the results of that attack, whether uh, this is a real piece of information or just a speculation, because we stopped receiving from this area any updates. And for us, for everybody, like bridgehead between Keramik and Alexandra is something new, something undiscovered, and we even don't know the purpose of this attack. Some, sometimes we try to analyze this area, but yet we haven't seen any real movements from the Russian side in this direction. The Russians reported that as a result of fierce clashes from on Donetsk front line, the Ukrainians lost 220 soldiers, 9 armored vehicles, including one tank. When talking about Artemovsk area, the situation was stabilized by the Russians. The Ukrainians still controls the uh, forest lines, trenches, and the st um, stronghold on the west and west north of Klishevka. The Russians are bombing and shelling this area heavily with the drones, with artillery strikes. For example, in this video, we can see how the Russians were attacking the Ukraine positions in the forest with artillery. Probably that was artillery preparation. We haven't received any numbers, any updates regarding any attempts to clear this territory, but um, the usage of uh, missiles probably is the first phase before the Russian of counteroffensive operation. Anyway, the Russians understand they control the situation, they see the real movements, they see the real regroupings, and as soon as they realize that it is safe to attack, they will. The Ukrainians from their side, as usually, controls the main supply roads that goes to Klishevka. On this video, we see how the Ukrainians destroyed another tank that was heading in direction of Klishevka or somewhere, or probably in direction of Andreevka as a result of that attack. That tank was probably damaged. In this video, we see how the Ukrainians discovered the Russian position somewhere in the forest line. We see a small operational uh, ammo depot among the forest lines. The Ukrainians discovered that the Russians were unpacking their uh, machine, their ammo supply car, and after that, they made artillery strike. As a result of that strike, the Russians lost the operational ammo depot in this area. So for now, there are no changes in the situation. I'm not even sure whether the Russians or the Ukrainians are going to launch any offensive operation, because if you ask my opinion, I don't see any purpose for the Russians to continue advancing in this area without any certain and real plan like to capture Chasov Yar or Kostantinovka. Just to capture these forest lines it will be another massacre but from the Russian side. Also, the Russians published the video of their activity on the northern flank of Bakhmut, of Artemovsk. Uh, if you remember, a few days ago, the Ukrainians launched a very powerful offensive operation in the direction of Zaliznyanska. That attack was repelled by the Russians. Uh, the Ukrainians were attacking mainly along the road from Makievka. Uh, and after that, during that attack, of course, the Ukrainians were using artillery system, they were using uh, a lot of ammo depots to supply their forces on the combat line. The Russians have discovered everything, and after that, the Russians launched their own reconnaissance operation in this area. And for example, today uh, the Russians managed to uh, pu publish the video how they discovered the Ukrainian machine, m the Ukrainian light vehicle, uh, support light vehicle, maybe this armored personal carrier who was uh, moving, that in, who was transferring and redeploying forces from one position to another. The Russians started hunting them, started tracking them. At some point, they, they realized that this track moved in direction of Makievka. Uh, the Ukrainians tried to hide that uh, machine somewhere in the forest. And after that, the Russians launched uh, artillery strike. Uh, one more time. Uh, this very interesting situation, for example, with Makievka. The Russians managed not just to find like armored vehicle that was moving from one position to another. The Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian accumulation of the forces. And even in this case, the Russians attacked this territory with missiles, with artillery strikes, but not with the cluster rounds. I can't tell you whether it's good or not. Probably when talking about the legal th side to the uh, the casualties and uh, the situation that this situation can affect the population, it's a completely negative side. But when talking about from the military perspective of the Russians, they know that the Ukrainians have already started using the cluster rounds massively and the Russians haven't started doing this yet. And they see that the Ukrainian cluster rounds have already gave some them some benefits. They managed to increase the speed of taking the settlements. 
I'm not sure what is the problem and I'm not sure uh, what is the answer to this question from the Russian side. Now we're moving further to Crimea forest. Today, uh, Ukrainians were pretty active in this area. They were bombing the Russian positions, in, mainly in the vicinity of Dubrova. And currently, we understand the main Ukrainian purpose and the main Ukrainian plans in this area. As I understand, the Ukrainians are preparing before counterattack. If you remember, yes, recently we received update that. Special Brigade Azov was redeployed exactly in Crimea forest in this area. This very famous brigade from the Ukrainian side, they are very popular because of Battle of Mariupol. And the main purpose, this is not the brigade of attack, this is media brigade. And the main purpose of this brigade is to create the feeling uh, and the support and to create a very nice, powerful spirit of willing to fight and so on. So this is like a flag. And this is like a flag to show the forces on the ground that we are together that and we together will do something. The Ukrainians continue massive artillery preparation of the Russian positions in the vicinity of Dubrova. The Ukrainians were bombing and shelling the Russian forces, the Russian positions in this area. Furthermore, the Ukrainians were bombing, uh, destroyed another Ukrainian art Russian artillery system. Some in Crimea forest, the Ukrainians were bombing Dubrova itself. They managed to discover the Russian position, the settlement. So as I see, there is a process, artillery preparation before Ukrainian attempt to attack in the direction of Dubrova. And the main purpose and the main reason of that is the, is the Tarskoye salient, this one. And this is a very big pain for the Ukrainians. And of course, uh, from one side, this is a very big pain because the Russians have already split this territory in two parts. And from another side, this is a very big pain because the, this uh, salient has, uh, have, has broken all the Ukrainians' logistic roads. And currently, the only thing they want is to cut the salient and to encircle the Russian forces who are currently located in the vicinity of Tarskoye. So I do really expect the Ukrainian attempt to attack. This is not going to be probably a real offensive operation of the Ukrainians. Of course, it depends how the things is going to develop. But anyway, the Ukrainians will try to attack because there are a lot of old brigades, a lot of old forces who uh, are located in this area probably even since the beginning of the creation of this front line, since the beginning of the previous autumn. And uh, the Kenyans just need to do this. They need to do this. They need to show at least some results in this area. The Russians reported that as a result of fierce fighting on the Liman front line, the Ukrainians lost 80 soldiers and 5 armored vehicles. When talking about coupons, the front line that is covered with the fog of war, the Russians report about some advances, about it uh, taking control over more strongholds in the checkpoints in the combat line. Yet we haven't received even a single video or photo confirmation. And this is very interesting and we will discuss this in a minute. The only thing we have is that the Russians published the video how they managed to discover the Russian the Ukraine artillery system, probably M777 Hobotza, and to destroy this artillery system as a result of uh, Lancet strike. Now, what is so important and so interesting in the Kupens front line? First of all, the Russians almost every single day tell us that the, Rus the Russians managed to advance, they capture another 1.5 kilometers in, a, in width, three kilometers in length. The Russians managed to capture two checkpoints, three strongholds and so on. But we can't see this on the map because we don't know coordinates. We don't see coordinates. We don't see armored vehicles. We don't know the forces and so on. And this territory is completely covered with the fog of war. And it's very difficult to judge whether this piece of information is correct or it's another speculation from the Russian side to F f change our focus or something like this so i didn't have an answer to this question almost probably until today uh, basically, uh, the Russians in the autumn are going to collect all their parliaments. So currently, the summer summer vacation in the Russian parliament, and during the autumn period of work of parliament, they are planning to adopt one important law, and this law is about to uh, to make restrictions for the civilians of Russia, for press reporters, for bloggers to publish video and photo from the combat lines. From, let's say from September, the Russians are no longer 
um, uh, um, are no longer be will be avail be available to publish video and photo even of such lancet strikes and the only source of information and the minister of defense is going to become the only source of publishing the real information and as i understand the russians currently on the coupon front line is basically something like a test area where the russians are trying to test the system with uh, with complete absence of any information from the front line they're testing the situation then probably they will provide some information to the parliaments they will investigate analyze the entire situation whether the absence of information helped them or not and after that they will make conclusions and as i understand the conclusions will be to stop showing any photo or video from the combat line and the only source the minister of defense is going to become the only source of the truth from the russia very interesting very difficult if you ask my opinion as i understand people anyway will try to search information will try to find the pictures and for also from the russians even if you adopt this type of law anyway the russians have access to the telegram channels but this law can force and will force the russians to join and subscribe uh, under ukrainian telegram channels because anyway you need to find some information and they will subscribe and we know that sometimes the ukrainians the also either the ukrainians and the russians show the only propaganda and this situation can lead to negative consequences like increase the level of ukrainian propaganda on the russian side so this is very difficult and dangerous law but from the other side as i understand the russians probably don't have any other solution they need to reduce the level of information from the combat line before the greatest russian counteroffensive or just offensive operation in the territory of ukraine that probably will take place somewhere in sumu or kharkiv area who knows and anyway we'll see and one more time, probably the most important update is that the United States of America approved to start sending the Ukrainians with the F-16s. And this is completely another story, another special military operation. It will, it will be the next phase or even another na completely different type of war when the Ukrainians get the F-16s. So we'll see. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.